Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the measure between function. Measure between is a great tool that allows you to create simple analysis between points, planes, faces, axes, and so on. Now I'm getting a lot of requests from people in various disciplines on how to take measurements. So I want to focus a little bit about, uh, on this measure between tool. So we have design release engineers, we have project engineers, design leads, engineering leads that aren't necessarily heavy CAD users but need to understand how to take measurements because they're the ones doing clash analysis, they're verifying that the parts fit, and so on. So we'll go into measure between and you'll notice that I have these first four icons. These four icons are basically measure between, chain mode, fan mode, and then you also have measure item, which will be a separate lecture, but this and this are exactly the same. This measure thickness is only available when you have a special digital mock-up license, the space analysis license turned on. So if you don't have this, you need to go grab it from your shareable licenses in order to turn that on and use it. So here you can see measure between allows you to specify two different objects to basically measure in between of. So if I pick this face and this face, it sets up just a standard measurement in between those two faces. This is measuring the shortest distance between those two faces. Now, with this option set, you'll notice as I move my mouse, my cursor around, I have a little active icon next to that cursor. Depending upon what I select over the top of, that little active icon is telling me what I'm picking. So when I came over here and I picked these two faces, you'll notice that this picked a planar face to a planar face. This is giving me my minimum distance and it's telling me exactly everything in this results portion, what I need to know. The calculation mode is set to exact. The next question that I get from people is, well, what else could it be if it's not exact? You have exact else approximate up here. And what this means is I'm going to measure everything with an exact precise measurement. On the off chance that you're measuring something in a CGR mode or a non-precise model like a tessellated model, then you're going to get an approximation of the measurement. Remember those tessellated models based off of settings that you have or CGR models based off of settings that you have can deviate off of the original model shape. In some cases, it can be fairly significant, up to, um, I've seen quarter of a mil, half a mil, depending on the size and how much curvature the model has. So that's why this is warning you, calculation mode, this is also approximate. If it's not exact, you'll get an approximate measurement, and this is telling you that it isn't exact. Other things that you have within the selection modes are different types of geometry that you can pick. And why this is important is because you need to be very specific at times. Let me cancel this out, go back into measure, to get the measurement that you're looking for. So for instance, if I come over here and I pick this cylindrical face of that hole, you'll notice I have an axis line that appears. What this is telling me is I'm going to measure from that axis line to this axis line. It's 152.311 millimeters. And you'll notice that the dimension is to the centers. And there's my little dimension flag. Well, maybe that's not what you wanted. Maybe you wanted to measure from actual face to face. So here I can go into selection mode and specify surface only. So now I'm telling the system that what I want is I want to measure from this surface. You'll notice that the axis system, or axis line, I apologize, didn't come up. So I'm 124.926 millimeters apart. So sometimes you have to be very specific as to what you're picking to measure to. Now, something else that you can use, I find kind of handy, and this is going to be, again, sort of an approximation, is what's called picking point. You have the option, let me restart the menu, to say I want to measure from a picking point. So this picking point is just wherever I happen to pick. Maybe I want to pick from the center of this face. You'll notice that I get that point there, and I want to go to this face. So it measures from that point over to that face. So picking point is a handy little tool. And you have several different things that you can pick in here. 
you can pick an edge only. Maybe you want to measure from the edge over to another edge. So you can specify edges only. You can specify any combination of elements to measure from and to measure to as well. Um, within the context of the assembly, you can say product only. And what's nice about product only is you'll notice here I can't really pick anything because this is supposed to be a product in the assembly is if I can pick two various products and it'll give you the shortest distance between the two various products. You don't have to try to guess where the closest points are, or closest edges are. It'll automatically do that for you. Something else you can do, let me turn on any geometry here and here. I'm going to hide show this body is, oops, let me do that again. I apologize. If I come in and say any geometry and I come over here and I specify this body, you'll notice that the icon turns into sort of a volume, has a little volume shape next to it. So if I don't know what that distance is between those bodies and I don't want to try to hearken a guess between a hey, what is the closest point, I can just simply pick one body to the next body and the system will figure that out for you. So those are the two points, the closest distances apart. Next you have under the uh, results, you have the calculation mode, exact. Okay, so this is going to, again, measure an exact distance. It's not using an approximation. This is what it's measuring from. So it's measuring from this, this. This is the distance, minimum distance that we have. And then down below that, you have create geometry. So if you wanted to, if I go into create geometry, You'll see here, I can create first point, second point, I can create the line, and if I say associative, it'll keep the actual parametric links to those points. Select OK, and now you can see that there are my points. Those are my coordinate locations for those elements, and that line is strung between those two points. So, that's my create geometry. Next, if I go all the way over to the right, you'll see customize. With this customization window, you can specify what you want to see. So display options in the panel, I have selection name. I can turn off selection name or I can turn it on in the 3D. So if I hit apply, you'll notice that the selection name shows up here. Maybe if I turn it off in the panel, I can you can see that it's no longer up there. You can also measure angles. So I'll turn that on. Components and then points. So where is point one? Where is point two? So here's point one and point two. You'll also notice that uh, this is only available in the panel. And then if I go into components, you'll see here this components is the delta distance from point to point. So in the x direction, this way, go up and down, I apologize. This direction, that's my distance. In my y direction, this direction, and then in my z direction, which is four and a half. So those are your components. These are the delta distances from point to point. You can also do maximum distance between elements. You can also do maximum distance from one and two. So you have a plenty of options in here to generate the measurement that you need. I'm going to use an other axis when I get into the measure item, which will be the next lecture. So that's basically the measure between. Now something else that you can do is measure between in chain mode and measure between in fan mode. So let me just cancel out. Let me go ahead and hide this. And here I'm going to say measure between and I'm going to say chain mode. So what this allows me to do is measure from object to object to the next object. And you'll notice that the measurement for the next object just automatically goes to the next face from the previous face to the next face from the previous face to the next point, whatever that is, from the previous selection. So it creates a chain of dimensions. Another option that you have is what's called measure between in fan mode. So this is almost like setting up your datum. So you pick the first face as your datum, and then you pick all additional faces. You pick this one here. 
you'll see this one has an angle of two degrees, the other ones are all parallel. And everything always measures back to the original face that you specified. So good tool, pretty simple to use. Now if you turn on keep measure, it'll put the measurement here in the tree for you. So if you need to use that measurement for any reason, maybe you want to tie a formula to it, then you have your measurement here in the tree specifically for that. So that is the measure between, that is the standard measure between, fan mode and chain, I'm sorry, chain mode and fan mode.